Alex thinks we can afford tuition and we can't. We need to tell her the truth. We always tell the truth. That's what we always say. Yeah, I think we should do it. We gotta lie about everything, because that's what parents do. Will Ferrell and Amy Poehler's characters got desperate trying to pay for college in their 2017 movie, The House. And in reality, many American families do struggle to foot the bill. Student loan debt stands at more than $1.6 trillion. That's an average of more than $37,000 per student. A new book seeks to demystify the college financial process. It's called The Price You Pay for College, an entirely new roadmap for the biggest financial decision your family will ever make. Author Ron Lieber is the Your Money columnist for The New York Times, and he joins us now. Ron, I'm so glad you're here. I want to get into the cost of college, but I want to start with a threshold question that I think a lot of people will ask themselves. Is college worth it? If you're on the fence about whether you or your child should, should apply, what do you tell them? Well, you tell them that the lifetime income benefit that comes from going to college is worth roughly a million dollars on average over your life. So if it is money and, um, you know, rising through the, the social class ranks that matters to you or staying where you are, you probably do want to go to college because it's much harder to earn a decent living if you don't. Good answer. An extra million dollars sounds pretty nice. Now, the cost of college on average has doubled in the past 20 years. Are we getting twice as much education? No. Um, look, here's the issue. Uh, the 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 undergraduate education as it's delivered hasn't really changed all that much, but it's become more expensive for the schools. Uh, the state schools get less uh, subsidies from, from the state legislatures, and so they have to raise tuition. The private schools have expensive people, um, professors, administrators, uh, the very people we want on campus to help our kids get to and through. So there's a reason for the prices going up, but I'm not sure that we're getting double the value that we did a generation ago. That's troubling. Well, there's the cost on the website of any university or college, and then there's a so-called true cost. What's the difference, and, and is it really negotiable? Can you get it down to a number you can afford? Sure. The list prices, the so-called cost of attendance that you find uh, on a college's website is one thing, and that might be uh, up to $80,000 for some private universities. That's per year now. But the net price is something different, right? You may get need-based financial aid, or there may be these unpublished merit aid discounts that have nothing to do with how much money you have, but may have everything to do with who you are, how your kids did in school, and how much that school may want to, and may want to, in effect, buy your kid with a 10 or a 20 or a $30,000 annual coupon. One of the more interesting moments in the book is when you talk about having conversations with your kids at about eighth grade, where you point out that good grades are not only good because you're going to learn more, it'll prepare you for your future, but you're literally going to get dollars if you do better, potentially, when colleges look at your transcript. Walk us through that conversation. How do you make that clear to kids? Because when you're in eighth grade, you're like, look, I mow the lawn, I make 15 bucks. You don't know what 30000 in debt really feels like. So this is the challenge here, right? And there are no good choices in this aspect of parenting because the system of paying for college is so complicated. If we don't tell our kids about these unpublished discounts, they're probably going to find out about them anyway, whether through the Internet or through older siblings. And so I feel like it's our job to let them know gently uh, how exactly the system works. We should let them know that we trust them, that we believe in them, and that they can handle the truth. You uh, dedicate the book to your daughter, Violet, who you write is worth every penny, as every parent feels about their children. Isn't that why these colleges and universities kind of have us in a bad negotiating position? They know we'll do anything we can within reason or even beyond reason to support our kids' future, and therefore they can charge anything they want. How do you take emotion out of this, or can you? 
It's almost impossible. Part of what I'm trying to do with my readers is make them more emotionally honest with themselves. The schools know very well that this is a head trip for us, right? We have fear that they're going to go tumbling down the social class ladder if we make the wrong choice. We have guilt that we haven't saved enough or earned enough to pay for this out of pocket. Um, and there's some snobbery and elitism around, you know, which schools are best and how people are going to look at their kids uh, and our kids when we graduate, right? So the schools know this good and well. We have to be honest with ourselves. Uh, about confronting these feelings and making sure those feelings do not lead us to make decisions and take on debt that we may regret later on. Ron, you caught our attention at the top. An extra million dollars people should hear on average lifetime earning difference if you go to college. Your book is an important way to help people understand how they can pay that upfront cost to get that big benefit down the line. Ron Lieber, thank you very much.